Welcome everyone. I'm Rich Colgard, Editor-at-Large and Global Futurist for Forbes. Today I'm talking to Kenneth Ferguson, who earned his MBA at the Forbes School of Business at the University of Arizona's global campus. North Carolina State University recently wrote this about Mr. Ferguson, quote, when Kenny Ferguson says he's done it all, he isn't exaggerating. His resume is extensive. He's been the personal security for North Carolina State men's basketball head coach, Kevin Keats. He started his own videography company. He was a federal protective security officer at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He launched a nonprofit and is an events and desktop support technician at the Friday Institute for Educational Innovation. And earlier this year, Kenny was featured on the inside back cover of Forbes magazine for his experience earning his MBA from the University of Arizona's global campus. Kenny is full of passion about education, being a lifelong learner, and his advocacy work for children and families in Wake County, North Carolina. Welcome, Kenny. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Rich. I really appreciate it. Well, um, you uh, were born and raised in Northern California, the oldest of 15 kids. Um, yep. You had a tough upbringing. Uh, can, you, can you give us some detail on that? Yeah, I mean, um, my mom, uh, was a young mother. Uh, she had me at 15, um, you know, with a lot of struggles uh, there being in a single parent household uh, with my grandmother. Uh, but my grandma did the best uh, that she could. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my mom, um, you know, had, you know, some substance abuse issues and things like that, which led to uh, us, you know, being taken away from her custody and uh, being placed in foster homes. Growing up in Northern California was pretty interesting. It was a, you know, it was great. Uh, being in a lot of different foster homes really wasn't the ideal situation. There were some things I didn't really understand about family and value and education, uh, but I was exposed uh, to a lot of different things throughout that hardship. And, um, you know, really being taught early on you know, through sports, uh, that adversity, uh, tough times, uh, mold and make good men, hardworking men, and um, anything is possible. So I've adapted that lifestyle, that use of words and ability to uh, know within myself and pass on to my own four sons. Well, there are a lot of people who, um even people with far more privileged backgrounds than, than your challenging background who wind up in college at age 18 and they're simply not ready for it. So it sounds like you were just simply, you weren't prepared. And um, then what did, what, did, what did you do after, after essentially sounds to me like being somewhat overwhelmed by an experience that you had no preparation for? Uh, when we moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, um, I was working obviously odd jobs, you know, being a young guy, uh, no formal background in education, uh, no degree or anything like that. Um, so what I did was I worked at a tie shop and I managed that for a while. Uh, it was called Ties Express. And from there, I really fell in love with, you know, knowing how to be in retail, right? Dealing with people, uh, how to handle, you know, a business and all the ins and outs of that as a, as a young guy, 18, 19 years old. Uh, from there, I went into the apartment industry and got into real estate and where I became a leasing agent and really excelled at that. Um, it was really awesome to be able to, you know, show people where they were going to be living. But then also while you're living there, if you had any issues or need anything, you know, I would be the point of contact as your leasing agent or leasing manager to, you know, get things taken care of for you or show you where there were great schools or great places to eat. And to, you know, take your family while, you know, coming to city, um, coming to the city in Raleigh. So from there, um, I really just was like, wow, this is great. Um, then we had the, of course, the financial downturn in 2008, where a lot of the apartment industry, those jobs and things like that were going away. And uh, I had to pivot and find another career. Uh, my son, Micah, who will be 14 uh, on August 14th, uh, was just born in 2008 and I was looking all over the internet and it's just trying to find anything. I'll work at Walmart, I'll, I'll do anything. But as you know, in 2008, the financial situation in our country was very dire. A lot of people weren't really having jobs, just like what happened with the COVID-19 crisis. 
And, uh, you know, I just prayed, me and my wife prayed and, you know, I was just like, God, I'll do anything. I'll do a- absolutely anything to take care of my family, um, with having two new babies. And, uh, I filled out an application for Kane Realty. Uh, it's a very large real estate, real estate company here in North Carolina and Raleigh. Uh, they specialize in class A office space, residential, um, a lot of mixed use developments, you know, very, you know, awesome places that they have here around the city, around the state. And I applied to their security department and I received a phone call the next day, said, hey, we're looking for great people. Can you interview today? I said, yeah. Um, and from there, my career in security and private protective services had began in law enforcement, things like that. Uh, so from 2008 and on, um, I was able to, you know, take on that career, a uh, very rewarding career, a lot of different special assignments, like you stated earlier, uh, with, you know, celebrities and things like that. And President Bush came to town, uh, senators. Uh, it was really awesome to kind of learn ins and outs, work with those agencies all the while, though, I mean, you were making great progress in that field, but um, the idea of going back and getting a degree beckoned. Um, talk about that and then talk about what sort of caused the shift in your mind to, to then actually lean into that dream. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, the shift really comes when, you know, you're up at night, you're you know, I was working, you know, night shift. I did night shift for about seven years, you know, where I was working overnight, like literally, you know, from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And <laughs> had a lot of time to think to myself, really, uh, you know, figure out what my next steps were, you know, with having, you know, young kids and, you know, having a family and people that are, I'm responsible for and having that obligation. Um, I really wanted to have something that I could leave a legacy to. Um, And that's not to say that being in private security and, you know, protecting people or walking around a shopping center, I did all those things too. Um, But, you know, when you're able to do things like, you know, Coach Calipari, you know, for Kentucky at a basketball event or Coach Roy Williams, right? All things that I have pictures of, of me in my uniform and protecting these great men, right? Great basketball minds. Uh, you know, Coach Keats, you know, having, you know, the ability to have that personal, you know, relationship and just bounce ideas off and things like that. Um, you know, it really kind of caused you to think about, you know, what what else could you do in your life? What what other value could you add to your skill set bag? Um, I always think about, you know, the bag, a fictional bag of having it on my back here. And, you know, what could I do? And when you have the mindset that you can do anything, uh, that's what led to me thinking about going back to school and saying, I started something and how could I preach to my kids that we finish everything that we start if when I went to school in 2002, you know, delivery and I didn't finish, you know, uh, being asked to leave and withdraw or just withdrawing, you know, um, it really weighed on me heavily about my higher education and, you know, what I wanted to do, the goals that I had set. Um, I really wanted to be able to get into roles that, you know, could obviously pay more, but that I could dig more into my skill sets of managing people, dealing with high-risk solutions, making sure that there are budgets that are in order. Um, I didn't have that formal training. And the only way that I could do that is if I went back to school, uh, which is where, you know, I started, you know, my Bachelor of Science in IT program. And uh, it was a, it was a tough ride, I will say. Uh, in the beginning, you know, having to start your general education all over again, right? So taking your maths, your English, your <laughs> your histories, your things like that. I mean, that stuff was tough. It's like, man, I thought that I would never really be doing this again. But uh, it, it really was a humbling experience to be able to uh, have that opportunity. And I took the mindset of I get to go to school. There are some people in this country all the people around the world that don't have the opportunity, that don't get to go to work every day. They don't get to go to school. Uh, so I really took that as an honor and a privilege to do so. Uh, and it was probably some of the best four years of my life uh, in my program, with UAGC. Um, and then obviously transitioning on, you know, to my MBA program, which was phenomenal. It was hard. It really was hard, but it was really phenomenal. 
um, to say the least. It really was. Well, talk about, so you went directly from um, getting your undergraduate degree to going right into the MBA program. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. What, yep. what, uh, what did you see about the MBA program that attracted you? Well, one of the things about the MBA program at UAGC that really was attractive was learning the specific skill sets of how to, you know, be in business. And I took the route of getting a Master of Business Administration. I really wanted to dwell into the whole part of how business runs. But when you think about running a business, especially one, whether it's either for yourself or within a corporation or whatever you want to call it, you have to know how it works from the inside out and from the outside in. Um, I learned those traits uh, while being at you know, UAGC, even through my Bachelor of Science in IT program. But then while I was going through that program, I was like on an educational high. It was like, man, uh, you know, this is great. I'm, I'm doing this, but I can do more, right? And I really was excited to be able to challenge myself. Um, you know, let's, let's be honest. To get an MBA is not something that's easy, right? To go back to school as an adult after already being in school for four years, to go another two and a half, it's not easy. I mean, every day I was up till two or three o'clock in the morning doing my assignments, working ahead, and then also trying to get extra help with learning the concepts, you know, and statistics and microeconomics, macroeconomics, things that I just couldn't really grasp, but with learning at my own pace and having professors just say, hey, listen, you can do it. Either you choose to do it or you don't. Uh, it really was like a challenge. And um, uh, it was it was a challenge. I'm, I'm being serious. It really was a challenge to be in the MBA program and to really be uh, put to the fire, I would say, um, and, and really, you know, pushed to the point where at times I really was like, I, I need to withdraw from this class. I, I can't do it. And my wife would be like, you can do this. You could totally do this. You were made for this. You know, you have just to take the time, take a step back, you know, turn the computer off for a couple of days, you know, and just come back with a fresh mind and, and, and really took that. And a lot of friends to say, look, man, keep going, you know, um, it's worth it. It will be worth it. And it is, and it has been. Well, it's a, it great, has been. it's a great force. An MBA is a great force multiplier for the, for the leadership skills that you have, that you've earned the hard way, that some of which are God given, many are, you know, but suddenly to uh, be able to attach an MBA to that really right. begins to open up fields for you. What, um, talk about your work with uh, youth and yeah. applying everything you've learned, both your challenging upbringing as a foster child. Um, your, your, let's say your, your first false start in college at Liberty, um, yeah. your, uh, your career, your entrepreneurial efforts, the hard work that you did to get your MBA. How does that all sort of translate into what you're teaching kids? Sure. You know, so my current, what I currently do, um, I am a youth football coach. I also am a part of my son's high school football team at Millbrook High School in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I've had the extreme opportunity and blessed opportunity to uh, be a part of a lot of different mentoring aspects, whether it be big brothers, big sisters of the triangle. Um, also being, you know, Pop Warner football, which is through Cap City Steelers. Um, and now also a homeschool league for kids that are in high school, post-secondary school who are either in high school, but homeschooled or have graduated a traditional four-year high school, but have that extra year between the time that they are 18 and 19 and they're still able to play in, in sports. Um, and that's with the North Wake Saints, uh, you know, shout out to those guys, you know, for allowing me to uh, be a part of that. And also the Pop Warner stuff, you know, encompassing all of those different things with big brothers, big sisters, with Path Changers. Path Changers is an organization here in Raleigh, North Carolina. That was started by Tamika Stiles and her husband. Uh, it's an organization dealing with foster kids, kids that are in foster care right now in our city, uh, in our state, who are being aged out. And a lot of times people see a lot of these organizations and they're doing all these great things, but people very rarely are wondering about the kids that were in foster care their whole lives, like I was, 
And now you're being asked to leave. Hey, you're 18, you're 19, it's time to go. You know, um, does that mean those kids have a plan? Sometimes no, a lot of times no. Does that mean that those kids have the opportunity to, you know, have people that love them, that love them well, that are guiding them? Uh, a lot of times the answer is no. With Path Changers, it's really awesome. You know, they are giving these kids the opportunity to be in a post-secondary type living where they're providing housing. They're teaching them the necessary life skills, leadership skills. Uh, how do you make a bed properly? How do you wash your clothes? Um, practicing good hygiene, cooking their own meals for the first time. Um, so it is really, really, really awesome. And how that encompasses to me is I only could wish that I had those opportunities as a young man. Um, I'm not saying that I didn't. I'm not saying that I wasn't blessed uh, with great youth pastors. You know, shout out Joe and Denise Lugo out of Vacaville, California, First Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Leroy Ganey and Cheryl Ganey, you know, who provided the same thing that I'm doing now. And they would always tell me, you know, when you make it, because we believe that you will, when you make it, you make sure that you pass it on and pay it forward uh, to those that may be in the same environment as you, uh, those that have it worse than you. Um, when you see it, you act on it and you make sure that you do the best you can uh, to see to it that the next people are being brought up. We all have an obligation to bring those that are behind us, those that are down below us, to pull them up to where we are, to propel them to the next level.